hey guys in this video i'm going to be taking you through all of the different shapes that various different compounds need to learn you need to learn these you need to learn how to draw them now in this video i use loads and loads of molly mods molly mods are excellent excellent things um if you've never seen this before or if your school can't afford them um but you can i strongly suggest getting your own set of molly mods so you can properly visualize the bonding that is going on, the shapes that things take, the orientation that things take as well. This is a complicated topic, it is worth spending the time getting it in your head properly. If you want some practice questions to go with this, you can go over to my website and get my workbook from there, which will take you through loads of practice questions on this topic and everything else in this series. Previously, you might have drawn compounds that looked a bit like this. These are 2D shapes. They look very, very flat. Unfortunately, this is not what compounds look like in real life, and we need to start drawing them properly. Here we have methane, and I've used Molly Mods, a modelling kit for chemistry, to show you what it looks like in real life. You can see it is not flat, it is 3D. We have things coming up, we have things going to the sides, we have things going back. And this is how we need to start drawing our compounds in organic chemistry from now on. So we can accurately represent where in space the other elements are and how the interactions could be. There are three notations you need to know for this. A straight line is in the plane of the page, a dashed line is behind the page and then a wedge is coming out of the page towards you. Here we have methane. Now you can see, this is what I've just showed you, it is not flat but we need to work out how to draw this properly. So we have, just wait for that to stop wiggling around, stop wiggling, there we go. We have our carbon in the middle, in the plane we have hydrogen at the top, again in the plane we have hydrogen at the top, going behind we have another hydrogen and then coming out as a dashed wedge we have another hydrogen. If I just drag that over there you can see what it looks like. The bond angles you need to know for this one are 109 degrees and it is a tetrahedral shape. Here we have ethane now. You can see again, this is not flat as uh, we would have previously drawn. So we now need to work out how to draw this in 3D. So our black bits are our carbons. These are going to be flat. We have hydrogens in the plane of the paper. We have hydrogens behind there in the back of the paper. Hydrogen's coming out towards us and this is going to give us again a tetrahedral shape because it gives us a tetrahedral shape around each carbon and tetrahedral shapes have a bond angle of 109 degrees. Here is water. Now the special thing about water are these big blobby bits on the end. These are the lone pairs. And lone pairs have a massive impact on the geometry of a compound. This is electron pair repulsion theory, if you want to go and have a look at the video on that. So here we have in the middle our oxygen, in the plane a hydrogen, and then again in the plane another hydrogen. You can see it is not straight like this, it is what we call bent. If I just take this down here, it is actually called a bent shape, 
and its bond angle is 104.5 degrees. Here we have ammonia, and again, you can see ammonia has one of these big lone pairs sticking out of the top, and this is going to affect how we draw it. So there is ammonia, it has some things behind, and it has a hydrogen in front. The bond angle for this is 107, and it is pyramidal. You'll notice that even though I've used the Molly Mods to put um, the lone pair on there, just to help illustrate things, because, I mean, they are there, they are important, we can't just ignore them. We don't draw them when we are drawing the shape. Here we have carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a nice, simple one. It actually looks like you draw it. I don't really need to redraw this again because it is linear. Its bond angle is 100 and 80 degrees. Ethine is another nice simple one. You can see you can look straight down that. The bond angle is again 180 degrees and it is linear. Here is boron trifluoride. It is one of those nasty ones that does not obey the octet rule but it is quite nice to draw because it is planar. So we don't need to draw another diagram for this because it's already there. Its bond angle is 120 degrees and it's planar. Ethene here, another nice one that I'm not going to redraw because all of the bonds in this are planar and our planar bonds are 120 degrees. Methanol here, yet again, this is one that is planar, so I'm not going to redraw it. And all the bond angles in this are 120 degrees. Phosphorus pentachloride, in terms of drawing and learning things, is actually quite a nasty molecule because it doesn't obey the octet rule, it has different bond angles, and it's a large and complicated shape. So let's start in the middle here, we have our phosphorus, then we have a chlorine in plane, another chlorine in plane, another chlorine in plane, we have one coming out towards us, and we have one going behind, away from us. Taking this over here, we can start to have a little look at the bond angles. We have two different bond angles in here. We have a 90 degree bond angle and we have a 120 degree bond angle. Now I know this is a bit tricky to get your head around. What I suggest you do is go and look at the University of Colorado's FET simulation, which will actually let you play around with the molecules or you can watch my video on the University of Colorado's FET simulation. This is trigonal by... pyramidal because you can see we have um, a triangular base here for two pyramids a pyramid on top and a pyramid on bottom on a triangular base another one here that doesn't obey the octet rule and is quite large and complicated to draw so we have our sulfur in the middle there we have a fluorine in plane, we have another fluorine in plane, we have a fluorine behind us, this one's also going behind us, here is a wedge coming towards us and then this other wedge coming towards us there. 
The bond angles for this one are actually quite nice because they are all 90 degrees. I know that is a little bit hard to believe from the drawing. It's a little bit easier to see um, from the video of the Molly Mods. But again, either getting your own Molly Mods and playing around with this or using the online simulations are a great, great way to actually get your head around what is going on here. And the shape... is octahedral. Now I told you earlier that ammonia has um, a pyramidal shape and a 107 degree bond angle. Ammonium is where we have added on a hydrogen ion up here, removing the lone pair. It is now turned into a bonding pair. So instead of having this lone pair up here, which makes this pyramidal with a 107 degree bond angle, we now have a different bond angle. This is now a 109 degree bond angle and it has a tetrahedral shape. This is all due to the electron pair repulsion theory because in very, very brief, the lone pair is more repulsive than the bonding pair, so it is going to force these down further away from the lone pair. I have a separate video on this which goes into more detail.